Okay then gang, so now we hopefully understand the basics of what HTML is all about. Now I'd like to take a little bit of a deeper dive and explore a few of the different tags available to us to create these different websites. So I've got open here the index.html file from the last video and I'm going to right click and make sure I've got this open with the live server over here. So right click, open with live server and we should be able to see that now in the browser. Awesome. Okay, so we've already seen these. These are paragraph tags denoted by a P. So we have the tag opening and closing at the end with the content inside it. So we'd use a paragraph tag for most kinds of text on a page. Now, the next tag I'd like to show you is something called a strong tag. So what I'm going to do is surround this thing right here with a strong tag. So if I say strong like this, and then I'm going to cut this and paste it after ninjas, then this right here is inside the strong tag. And what a strong tag does is make something bold. It means it's important in the eyes of the browser. So if I save that and preview, we can see that this is now bold, awesome. Now, another kind of tag, a bit like strong that we can use is the EM tag. So I'm gonna surround this page word with EM, like so, and this basically means emphasize something. And what the browser does when it sees something inside the EM tag is it italicizes that. So if I save it and preview, then we can see this is now in italics. Okay, so one other that I'm gonna do over here and that is the small tag. So let me just do that first of all, small, the opening and closing tags surrounding this word first. So I'll paste that in there. And this means make this word a bit smaller. Now, the difference is not overly noticeable, but if you look closely, you can see that this word is ever so slightly smaller. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit more, you can notice that difference a little more. So a very subtle effect. Okay, so there's a few simple tags that we can use to give some basic kind of structure to our content. Now, the next kind of tags I'm gonna show you are the heading tags. Now we have six different types of heading tags and they're represented by six different numbers. One being the strongest and the biggest and six being the least important if you like. So what I'm gonna do is create the H1 tag. So that means heading one and this is seen in the eyes of the browser as the most important heading. So if I say something like heading one over here and save it, then we're gonna get a nice big heading like that, nice and bold and big. Now, I said we had six different types, so if I do H2 and then heading two, I'm also gonna to go to the next line and do H3 and H4 while I'm here, so heading three and heading four. And you just saw something then that I did, that was to say the tag name, like H4, and then press tab. That's just a little shortcut available to us inside VS Code. So if I wanted a paragraph tag, I could just type P and then tab, and that creates this. Or if I wanted a strong tag, I just type strong, tab, and it creates that tag for me. So that's nice. So anyway, these headings. Let me save that and preview over here. And you can see that these are getting smaller the larger the number. So the larger the number, the less important it is. And that might seem like counterintuitive because you'd think a larger number is more important, but it's not. Heading one or H1, that's the most important heading in the eyes of a browser. And H6, which is the last one we can go down to, that is the least important. So you might use this for the site title and you might use this for a section in a web page, this for an article heading, this for a sub navigation inside the article etc. So then there's some different headings that we can use, very simple tags again. The next thing I'd like to show you is what's known as a UL and this stands for unordered list. Now inside the UL we don't just write random text like this, we actually write a series of different tags and they are li tags and each li is a single list item. So this UL, unordered list, is a wrapper for li tags. And inside the li tags themselves, we could say something like Yoshi, and then I'll do another li tag below that with Luigi inside it. And then below that, we'll say Toad. I'm gonna save this and preview. And now we can see we can have this list right here with these little points or circles next to them.
So that is a UL unordered list and it's unordered because there's no one, two, three, four, etc. They're just bullet points. But if I change this to an OL, that stands for ordered list. And that actually puts numbers in front of them. So we have one, two, three, four, etc. Now, now I'm going to change that back to UL by control Z in twice or three times rather and save that. So that's how we can do lists using HTML. So another tag that we can use is the div tag. And I know these are coming thick and fast at you, by the way, all of these different tags, but don't worry, you don't need to remember them all. A good web developer is not made by remembering tags or remembering CSS styles later. It's made by understanding. So as long as you're understanding what I'm doing, that's the important point. If you ever need to remember something, Google is your best friend. I use it all the time because I'm constantly forgetting things. So don't worry if you don't remember them all. I don't expect you to. There's going to be loads of practice later on in the course with all of these different tags and you will eventually start to remember probably 70 or 80 percent of them. Anyway, the div tag. So this stands for division. And it's normally used to divide content into sections or group together and contain other elements which belong together. For example, on this, we could essentially have three sections. We could have this as a section, this as a section, and this as a section. So what we could do is surround all of those in div tags because they're their own divisions, if you like. So I could say div up here, and then I'm going to cut that and paste it at the bottom over here. And remember, we indent stuff like this just for readability so that is now its own section inside a div tag a division i could do the same thing here so div and i'm going to come to the bottom and paste that in div right here and i'm going to highlight all of that and press tab to move it in and then i'll do the same thing down here div and paste this at the bottom like so highlight all of this and scoot it in so that is a div, they just kind of mark out different sections, if you like, and group them together inside a single element or division. So this actually has no visual effect over here. Nothing's going to change. All we're doing is grouping things together. And these will come in handy later on when it comes to using CSS and reaching into our HTML to try and get hooks to different elements. These will come in handy then. So we'll see more of them in the future. But since the release of HTML5 semantic tags, which we'll also see later, they're not needed as much now. So you're probably going to see the use of this fade slowly and slowly as time goes on. But people do still use them quite liberally. Now, another thing you're also going to see inside HTML documents is the span tag. So if I do a span down here and just write something inside it, I could say I am a span tag like so and preview it over here and it says I am a span tag a bit like a paragraph tag but they don't behave the same way and we'll see why later on but span tags are basically a way to add a CSS or JavaScript hook into a part of text or HTML and we're going to see that in action later on in the course for now just know we can also use these span tags to surround content as well now, all of these different elements that we've seen so far, they've been comprised of an opening tag and a closing tag. Opening, closing, opening, closing, etc. But some elements are made up of only one tag with no content jammed in between them. An example of this is the BR tag. So let me show you this. I'm going to come to this thing over here and place the BR tag just before span right there. And what this does is cause a line break. So, oops, it's going to enter onto the next line inside the browser. So if I save that and preview, we can see right here where we place the BR, it goes to a new line. So that's what the BR tag does. And it doesn't need a closing tag like forward slash BR like so, because there's no content inside it. All it needs is a single tag. We only have opening and closing tags generally when we need to put content inside them. So that's one type of tag which doesn't have a closing tag. Another type is the HR tag. So I could come down here and say HR. That stands for horizontal rule. And if I save this and preview, we can see down here, we have this gigantic line at the bottom. It's a rule. It separates content. Now, also with these tags where they don't have a closing tag, you might see some people do one of these inside the tags 
themselves. That makes them self-closing and we used to have to do this but we don't have to do this anymore with the HTML5 specification, the current specification of HTML. But I just wanted to make you aware in case you see that in other people's code. So then another example of a tag that doesn't have a closing tag is the image tag. So I'm going to say image like so. Now this in itself is not going to do much in the browser. In fact, nothing shows at all. And that's because we've not said what image that we want to actually show in the browser. Now to tell the browser that we have to use what's known as an attribute. Now an attribute is just something inside a tag, inside the angle brackets, which gives more information to the browser about that tag. So the attribute that we need in this case is a source attribute. And that source attribute is going to tell the browser which image that we want to show in the browser. So we set the source equal to something and that's going to be in either double or single quotes right here. So this source has to be a path to the image that we want to use. Now I'm just going to drag an image over here into the file tree that I want to use. Nice little ninja. And what I'm going to do is provide the path to that file relative to this file. So that is just ninja dot png so now this image should show in the browser if i save it and scroll down over here we can see that ninja right there now i said that the path right here has to be relative so imagine now that instead of the image being right there we had a folder called image and we put all of our images inside this folder which a lot of people do when they're creating websites now obviously this wouldn't work we wouldn't see this down here just an empty placeholder and that's because this doesn't exist. We're looking for a ninja right here, but the path now is inside the image folder. So we need to say image forward slash ninja, and that would work. That means go inside image folder, then get ninja inside that image folder. So if we save it and preview now, it works. Now, if you're using the file protocol at the top, and that was just double clicking on an HTML file in your file explorer, so it opens up in a browser, then this way of working is going to be absolutely fine using relative URLs. But if you're using a local server, you could also add a forward slash at the start to represent the root of the project, the root of this folder, and then do the path from there. Right now, it doesn't really matter which one we use, so I'm just going to use relative paths like this. So let's save it. Everything still works. Now, Another attribute that we should probably add to an image tag is going to be the alt attribute. And that is going to be a value which will be used by screen readers which don't show images. And it's basically a text representation of the image. So we use this alt attribute to describe the image to things like screen readers. So I'm just going to say a picture of a ninja. OK, so we just do that for accessibility reasons, really. So that's not going to have any visual effect over here. Nothing changes. It's just for accessibility. OK, then. so some other tags which have attributes like these things over here are an anchor tag and anchor tags are used to create links to other pages or other websites. So, for example, I could come up here to the top and inside the first div, I'm going to now nest another tag which is going to be an anchor tag now if i press a and tab it creates that and it also creates this href attribute so this stands for hyperlink reference and it basically means what website do you want to go to when the user clicks the text inside this anchor tag so i'll just say something like https www.thenetninja.co.uk awesome website and i'll say the net ninja website all right so if I save this now and preview and go to the top, notice we have this link right here. It's styled different automatically by the browser to look like a link. So we know to click it. And if I click it, then it's going to go to this website over here. So what if I want to create a link to another page on my website? Well, first of all, we'll need to create that page. So I've got a new file and call this about.html. And then inside here, what I'm going to do is just copy all of this stuff inside here, control a, then control C to copy, go inside about and paste this in. I'm going to delete a lot of this stuff here and I'm going to replace it all with an H1 and say about us. OK, so this is the about page, really exciting stuff. And now what I could do is another anchor tag down here, which is going to link 
to that page. And again, I need to provide a relative path right here. So relative to index, it's in the same directory. I can just say about.html and that's where this anchor tag is gonna to link to. So I can say about page right here, save that. And if I go to about page now, it's gonna to go to this page right here. So that's how we link between different pages inside a website. So then let's have a look at some other different tags that accept attributes. So the next one I'll show you is gonna be a block quote tag. And this is basically used to quote something from another source or another website. So I could say something like, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. And then over here, I could add an attribute, which is gonna be site. And this is gonna be where we got this information or this quote from, what was the original source? So I could say something like HTTP, www. And then oscarwildsite.com. Okay, so that's how we cite another author or another person and add it into a block quote. Now, if we look at this in the browser, it's going to look like this down here. Pretty simple. And all it does is basically indent it to the right a little bit from the edge of the page. That's all the block quote tag does. Now, I'm going to show you one more attribute that we can use, and that is going to be on a P tag down here. And inside, I'll just say style me like so. And then the attribute is going to be style now we're venturing into css right here so don't worry too much about this right now i'm just giving you a very light introduction to this right here so inside here we can style what this looks like using a bit of css syntax i'm just going to say color is going to be orange and again don't worry about what this looks like right now we're going to talk about all of this later on i'm just showing you this style attribute so this right here is going to make this text orange in the browser and if we come down here, we can see that. So these are a load of basic elements inside HTML. And with everything we've learned here, you could probably create a full web page with just these tags. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to show you, actually, and that is how to create comments inside an HTML page, because sometimes we like to put headings above something to describe some content for us as a developer, but the comments don't show up in the browser. So when a developer views your code, they can see your comments, but not when they view it in a browser. So for example, I could come down here and do a comment to say span tag below and save it. If I view this in a browser, we don't see that, but over here as a developer, we can see this. So a comment in HTML starts much like a normal tag. Then we have an exclamation mark, then two dashes, then the actual comment, then two dashes again, then a closing angle bracket. Now we can also use comments to comment out certain sections of code. So if I wanted to, I could add a comment right here like this. I take the closing bit and paste it at the end over here. And now we're commenting out this code. So if I save it, we're not going to see that span tag inside the browser anymore. If we inspect though, we should still be able to see that span tag right here. OK, but it's not showing in the browser because we've commented it out. So that's sometimes good for testing out your code in a browser if you want to take chunks out and then put them back in. And a shortcut for this, if you want to say comment out a big block of stuff is to highlight it all, then press control and forward slash and that comments all of that chunk out. Do the same thing again to uncomment it. OK. So then my friends, everything that I've shown you so far in this video is probably now enough to make a very simple HTML document or a web page. So we've learned some of the most common HTML tags, a paragraph tag, an anchor tag, UL, LI, image, div, and more. And we've also seen what attributes inside these tags are, the extra information about those tags. For example, we have a source attribute for images to say where the image is kept, the path to that image. We also have the href for anchor tags, which says to the browser where we want to go when a user clicks on that link. We have the site for block quotes and we have the alt for image tags. So we've seen those as well. And there's more attributes that we're going to use in the future, not just these ones. This was just a bit of an introduction to them. We've also looked at how to leave comments on a page too, either to comment out a bit of code if we don't want it to appear in the browser or just to add little instructions to ourselves or other developers when we're previewing the code. So that's all the basics covered. In the next video, I want to take this one step further and start to look at forms in HTML.